My name is Art Brewer, and I'm currently serving as President of the Board of Trustees of this congregation. But today I'm speaking to you on behalf of former recipients of the Knight Award who have selected this year's winner. Every year for the past 20 years, this award has been presented to a living person who has, as a volunteer, contributed at the national level to furthering the principles of Unitarianism in Canada. The award honors the ideals exemplified by the lives and the work of Victor and Nancy Knight, who are former members of this congregation, and is therefore called the Knight Award. So, I'd like to invite forward this year's winner of the award, our very own Ellen Campbell. So now Ellen has the unenviable task of standing here and not looking embarrassed while I list out all the accolades and the reasons that she so much deserves this award. Uh, Ellen's service to Unitarianism and Unitarian Universalism spans nearly six decades and literally the globe. Ellen joined the First Unitarian Congregation of Toronto in 1973. Her resume includes stints on the board, chairing of the 1988 Ministerial Search Committee and several other committees. She continues to be a presence in every community she serves, soft-spoken but determined to move things forward. Ellen's work as executive director of the Toronto YWCA led her to a contract job in long-range planning with the Canadian Unitarian Council, which many of us know as the CUC. In 1990, she became the second executive director of the CUC and served in that position until the year 2000. Using her skills in organizational development and training, Ellen brought a new and sophisticated level of organization and policy structure to the CUC. Ellen has named three themes that dominated her tenure. The growth of congregational confidence to manage our own affairs nationally in Canada, the growth of an indigenous Canadian ministry, and the development of an international presence, and she has influenced all three. Those who attended the CUC annual meetings in those years will recall Ellen sitting side by side with the president on the dais. And as often as not, it was Ellen who responded to the queries from the floor. It was not a matter of exceeding her place, but rather a case of simply knowing the organization inside and out. Ellen helped spearhead a change in social justice practices by inviting a couple of congregations to create study guides on particular issues such as choice in dying. Instead of haphazardly passing resolutions in response to limited and immediate needs, the guides help the CUC create comprehensive policies, and some of those policies still guide our actions today. Ellen was one of the driving forces in the growth of our international presence. She served in the International Association of Religious Freedom from 1996 to 2006, including two years as president. She attended the founding meetings of the International Council of Unitarians and Universalists, she was on the executive committee from 2001 to 2003 and currently is supporting the fundraising campaign of that body. Ellen introduced the International Luncheon at CUC meetings to promote UUism beyond our borders. Canadian Unitarians have a higher awareness of international connections than any other group in the UU world. Most recently, Ellen served on the CUC board promoting fundraising, a reawakening of the Friends of the CUC campaign, and she was on the Executive Director Contract Committee and Search Committee. Also, while serving on the board, Ellen represented the Unitarian Congregations of Greater Toronto on the Toronto Area Interfaith Council. Whether as staff, elected officer, or supportive committee member, Ellen has demonstrated a lifelong commitment to the cause of Unitarianism in Canada and Unitarian Universalism worldwide. So it's with the utmost pleasure that we present this award to Ellen.
And just in case any of you have noticed that we have been videotaping this, a word of explanation. This presentation is normally made at the CUC annual meeting, which will be held in uh, Vancouver at the end of this month. Um, Ellen and Doug have just moved, and so they're up to their ears in boxes and trying to get those all unpacked before go rather than going out to the uh, annual meeting. So I turn the mic over to Ellen for some comments. Initially, I felt that I had some unfair advantage over the other nights. Most of them were, are finishing up their dessert and coffee after the CUC Awards Banquet when their names are called and suddenly they need to respond. I've had a little time to think about what I want to say about this honor, but I found that it's not much easier to respond when you have time to think about it than when it's sprung upon you. The Canadian Unitarian Council has been an important part of my life for over 16 years. Like Joni Mitchell sings, I've seen both sides now as both staff and volunteer. So has Vita Ng, the, president, uh, the present executive director, as a matter of fact, but she went in the opposite direction to me. The tasks are different, but the joys, anxieties, and successes are much the same. It's been a privilege and a joy to see our religious community in a larger context, initially to experience the whole of our Canadian context, and then to expand my horizon to include Unitarians and Universalists from far afield, from Europe, from Asia and Africa, and to come to appreciate the things we have in common and the differences among us. I've had the opportunity to work with wonderful people, people I see often, and people I see only at annual meetings or occasional conferences, who have become close friends as we've shared responsibilities, worried about money, struggled with sometimes unwieldy governments, and looked for ways to resolve conflicts. I'm truly sorry not to be sharing this year's annual meeting with all of you. I'm blessed to have spent most of my professional and volunteer life building and supporting institutions whose purposes are to build a better world. Some people predict, predict that those institutions will disappear as we move into a digital, electronic, more individual world. Maybe they will, or maybe they will take a form we don't see now. But what I love about institutions is that they can enable things to happen that would be hard to do without them. 50% of the Unitarian congregations in Canada were able to move quickly to sponsor refugees from Syria because the CUC was a refugee sponsorship agreement holder. We were able to be a friend of the court in the Carter case on assisted dying because the CUC had a policy and were ready to move in, in support. The institutional support and the response of our congregations makes me very proud. I'm deeply moved. Before I say that, I just would like to acknowledge the support that Doug has been to me all through this time and my children who've had a a less attentive mother than they might have. <laughs> I'm deeply moved and very grateful to receive this award. Thank you from the bottom of my heart.